Guys, welcome back to another Lawn Care Millionaire video, sitting down with Naylor once again. Going to be diving into his equipment strategy. And I know if you are a longtime LCM subscriber, you have heard Jonathan talk about equipment. I've written blogs about equipment uh, buying strategies for Service Autopilot. Um, we even, like, you've heard uh, Bear Duplissy, my co host from the Profit Roadmap. Uh, sort of articulate that same equipment buying strategy that we've been preaching forever. So I wanted to sit down today with Naylor because he is in the trenches. Uh, he does equipment reviews, so he's touched a lot more equipment than I ever will. Uh, they won't let me back on the mowers at GIE, I'm sure. Uh, I went, we didn't include this in the tour when I uh, went out to Kirk Slack's shop, but I uh, did run over some annuals with one of his mowers um so no one wants me testing equipment anymore they don't want to hear what i think about equipment so i'm sitting down with a real pro to get some real advice uh so let's just dive right in here Naylor. thanks for jumping on again oh no problem thanks for having me <laughs> um so how do you choose equipment so when, when i first started my business uh i didn't know anything about like brands or anything like that you know I, I was just really trying to transition from homeowner to a professional service provider you know like and, and and just i didn't even know the difference between residential and commercial so that was like the first step you know and i'm looking at stuff everywhere like most people do home depot lowe's whatever hardware stores are in your area and things like that uh, landscape suppliers a lot of times have some of that stuff, bigger equipment. They don't necessarily have mowers, but they might have some other things, you know. So you kind of look at all that. You do some window shopping, research online, and uh, but in my area, um, the one brand that I saw the most of, or at least at the time, was Toro. Uh, you know, Home Depot sold Toro mowers, and then you know my equipment dealer that I use now sells Toro mowers. And at the time, you know, I didn't understand the difference, right? Like Home Depot had like $5,000 zero turn Toro mowers. And I'm like, wow, that's not too bad. And then like my equipment dealer had like $10,000 <laughs> Toro zero turns. And I'm like, what? They look like the same mower basically. I mean, I don't understand like what's the difference. So, you know, they had to school me on that and just like, all right, let's break it down. So once, once I realized the difference, you know, the main differences between the two, then I, then, then I was able to, you know, make, make the right purchases and so on. And I obviously got commercial and, and did all that. But uh, so, I mean, I kind of by default, you know, went with Toro because that was all I knew. That was all they had. We're kind of like in Toro country. I mean, there's other brands around here um, as well. But at the, at that time, that's all I knew of was Toro. It was just starting out. So I just kind of got that brand by default. And that equipment dealer is also very close to where I live. Also, you know, because of that, close to all the neighborhoods that, that I serviced at the time and still continue to service to this day because they keep growing in the same area. My storage unit where I work in, work out of all my stuff, my parking for my, my uh, you know, trailers and all that stuff. Everything is all close together right next to my equipment dealer. So um, it, it all worked out that I ended up getting some, you know, the mower from there because they're close by and I developed a great relationship with them. They're good people. So I, I just keep buying, you know, Toro mowers from them because they're, you know, right there local. They're good people. And Toro is a good brand. I mean, it's not for nothing. That's a good brand. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more, but, but what, it, what I say to people with this conversation comes up it, when they ask me that kind of question is, if you have different variety of, of brands, you know, like sometimes, sometimes you have a dealer that sells multiple brands. So at that point, you just need to try them all, right? Try the different ones, ask if you can demo them, do your research online about them. Obviously they're going to give you the facts of the different brands and they might have incentives to sell one over the other, who knows? So sometimes you have to take that with a grain of salt. You can't just go with what your sales guy is telling you, you know, that, they might favor one over the other. You have to figure out what's going to be best for your business. At the end of the day, it's like a truck. They're all going to do their job. A truck's going to be a truck. It's going to drive. It's going to tow. It's going to haul, whatever. But it comes down to personal preference. You know, there's going to be different, different like bells and whistles and stuff, right? Different types of different ways that things are, you know, are done, you know, deck height chain mechanisms over here or that, you know, all this stuff is just a little bit different, just like a truck. So it comes down to personal preference. 
try the mowers out, see what works best for you, see what you feel the most comfortable on. Is it a stand on mower? Is it a sit down mower? Um, you know, is it a walk behind mower? Like what do your properties need? What do you feel more comfortable? What can you afford? All those things. But it really comes down to the equipment dealer itself yeah. because, you know, you might not, you might like a particular brand for whatever reason over another one, but at the end of the day, that that brand might not be available in your area or the equipment dealer might not be the best. You know, I've heard so many stories of people that will drive 30 minutes, you know, out of their way to get to a better equipment dealer and buy from them. I've heard of people switching brands because the, the brand that they had, they got no dealer support. Their equipment dealer was awful. They didn't like them. They were mean to them. They didn't take care of their stuff properly or they, they, they you know, they gave them the runaround all the time. They could never get their mowers out of the shop, like all this stuff. So they switched brands so that they could have a better dealer because they, the equipment dealer that sold that brand was great. They never had any problems. You know, if they ever had any problems with their, with their mowers, they, it was in and out quick, you know, run around. It's kind of also like, kind of like finding a mechanic for your vehicle, right? You know, you want to, you want to find the right mechanic that you can trust and that's going to have a good rapport and take care of your, your vehicles. And if you have to drive out of your way to get to that mechanic, then a lot of people are probably going to do that because they, they don't want to get the run around. They want to get, you know, fair prices and all that kind of stuff. So it's the same thing applies to, to your equipment dealer. And I was fortunate that my equipment dealer was close by, just like I'm fortunate that the storage unit that I picked is close by. I mean, I, I mean, there's other storage units, there's other equipment dealers, but the one that I, that's close by, they're great. They're great people. They sell Toro, which is a great product. I mean, a great brand and it, you know, it, it all works out. So that's, that's kind of how it all happened. It happened by default. It's, it's fortunate that, that it all worked out that way. But at the end of the day, I know plenty of stories of people that have had to go, like I said, go find a different equipment dealer, change brands because they needed to find a better equipment dealer that sold a different brand, you know, by default, you know, like, and at the end of the day, they're all going to cut grass. So as long as you feel comfortable, you know, with that, with whatever brand it is, then that's it. But it, you know, you, you could say you like one brand, but if no one sells it in your area, it doesn't matter, yeah. you know, or if they're a horrible customer service, then you're just going to have to find it somewhere else. Yeah. So brand. So we want number one, we want a, a solid relationship with a dealer and with whoever's going to be servicing your equipment. And then number two, then it's going to fall to personal preference and what's available at that dealer. Right, right. Because some dealers do have multiple brands, like I said. So that's where it comes down to doing some research and making sure you can demo them, you know, and, and kind of figure it out from there. That's where it really becomes personal preference. Sometimes there's financial things in there. Some brands have different incentives, maybe different times of the year, you know, uh, fleet pricing. I know Toro has fleet pricing and different com different brands have different things. So that, that all comes into play to timing. And, and, you know, if you like two brands equally, and then and they mow grass equally. You're like, all right, well, which one's got the better price, better value, better, you know, bonus. Maybe I can get multiple things at the same time and save money or whatever, you know, what has a different warranty. That's where you really start nitpicking and finding the little, the little things, you know, that might make or break a brand. But a lot of people don't have those kind of tough choices to make. They're just, it's one, it's either this or that this dealer over here or that dealer over there. Cause not, not every dealer, most dealers, I wouldn't, not every dealer sells more than one brand. You know, okay. my equipment dealer only sold Toro, you know, for the longest time. Now they sell Toro, Toro and Wright. So it just depends. Sometimes there's rules that apply. Some brands don't want to be with other brands and stuff like that. So, yeah. but well, yeah, I'm sure it's, it's just like adding a new service offering for a lawn care business. I'm sure that right. it's a pretty big investment to bring it in a is. whole new brand of mower. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. For sure. So, um, okay. So we've, we've kind of talked about how we're going to figure out what we want to buy, who we want to work with. Um, and then are, are we willing to buy used equipment? Do you prefer to like only buy new equipment? Where are you on that? Yeah. So I've never bought used equipment just because, um, two things. One, I just kind of feel a little unsure about it because I'm just uneducated about, you know, 
I mean, I, I just, I didn't even know residential versus commercial in the beginning, right? So, I mean, I've come a long way, but I'm still no expert by any means. Like, I, I can't, I, I can't really tell if, this, if a used mower is any good or not. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I feel like, I feel like I might be victim, more at risk to being a victim of like ha getting a bad mower or something. So I just don't feel as comfortable because I'm just not that, that uh, educated with that kind of stuff to be able to see a used mower, know if it's a good deal and buy it. And secondly, a lot of people that do, that I know that buy used mowers are one, educated and two, mechanics, like mechanically yeah. inclined. So it doesn't really matter what's wrong with the mower. They usually just fix it on their own. And sometimes they're perfectly fine with whatever's wrong with it. Sometimes they can see immediately what's wrong with it and they can get the price down lower and then they get a good, they get a good deal and they spend however much time fixing it up. And that's another thing. I don't have a lot of time either. I've got a family and, you know, a lot of stuff going on with social media and obviously my business, which isn't what isn't necessarily what everyone else has going on. A lot of the guys I know that tinker around with their mowers are like, young guys living, you know, on their own or at home and they don't have, you know, all this extra stuff. So they can just spend all night in the garage tinkering around. They don't have kids that are like, daddy, are you coming home? Are you coming inside? You know what I mean? Like, you know, are you going to have dinner? Like, like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they, so they have time, they have a little more time, but they also have the, the, the education, the knowledge so they can, they can know what needs to be done, know if it's a good deal and then fix whatever problems. Uh, exist. So I don't have any of that. So I just have stuck with new new mowers because I, at least I know what I'm going to get, you know, right off the bat. Um, uh, and, and then there's the warranties and all that kind of stuff. So I just feel more comfortable doing that. And then you also have some incentives. You, you know, you can finance new equipment versus just buying used. You just got to buy it cash, you know, most of the time, especially if it's from a person. So, or maybe you can, you know, do something with a dealer, maybe uh, some way, but for the most part, you know, you, you, uh, financing is for new stuff. So you, you, know, you get new equipment and you finance it. And, you know, as long as you can pay it off in the time that needs to be paid off and hopefully you can get zero interest or low interest and, and you'll be all right. You know, yeah. If you don't have zero interest then you need to plan to pay it off as soon as possible. So you're not paying all this extra money from interest, even if it's only like a, a 2% or something low, you're still paying them more money on top of it. So if it's zero interest, it's a win-win. As long as you pay it off when, when it's, when it's time, you make your minimum payments, it'll be paid off. Yeah. You can pay it off sooner if you want by paying more. Um, but this way you can kind of keep growing your business and keep your cash flow for marketing and, you know, payroll if you have employees and all that kind of stuff that needs cash, you can't, you know, finance that kind of stuff. And then, you know, you finance some equipment if you need to during that growth and just make sure you keep paying it off and then you'll be good to go. And then you might need to buy another mower because you grew again or whatever. So, or finance another mower because you grew again. So that's, that's kind of the rate that that's the path that I've gone. Every single mower that I've got, every piece of equipment, I should say, because I have a stand on aerator mowers, um, every, every major piece of equipment that I've had to purchase, I've always financed it and paid it off you know, over the course of that time that, uh, when I first started, I, my, my mother-in-law paid, paid, bought my mower with her credit card and I just paid her. So it was financed through her. <laughs> but, um, cause at the time we were, we, we were trying to make our credit, like keep our credit like pristine so we can buy a house and stuff. So we don't want to mess it up with getting a, extra debt. So, but although ever since then, you know, I just financed equipment, you know, on my own and paid it off that way. So. Yeah. That's my experience. Well, yeah. Naylor, thanks for, for hammering home uh, that equipment strategy. Um, hopefully that is, is helpful to the people watching. If these are the questions that you're asking, they're definitely the questions that I have heard most often when uh, people are wandering around looking at uh, shiny new stuff at GIE and places like that. <laughs> yeah. um, so, dude, thanks so much for spending all this time uh, going over stuff with me. We've, uh, we're, for, for all the viewers at home that are seeing this in like different chunks everywhere, uh, we, are, we are finishing up a, a marathon recording session. So, Naylor, thank you so much for, for helping Yeah, me. no problem, man. You're welcome. I appreciate it. It's, it's fun. Yeah. All right. Well, we will see you guys later.